The Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Award is presented to a nominee who emulates Dr. King in leadership and philosophy and who opens the pathways of hope to Americans of all races and groups. This year's honoree is from New Jersey. Hi, I'm Wendell Steinhauer. Every day it seems we hear about more violence in the streets, and we wonder, how will it ever end? Well, one way is through the leadership, the organization, and the dedication of local activist Larry Hamm. Today's rally in Newark, New Jersey, marks the 48th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s Poor People's Campaign to End Poverty and Racism. It was organized, as many rallies in Newark are, by Larry Hamm, co-founder and chairman of the People's Organization for Progress, an independent grassroots political organization fighting for change. Larry Hamm has been an activist his whole life having witnessed the Newark riots at the age of 13. He went on to become student body president at Arts High School, where he organized and led a student sit-in to protest a prolonged teacher strike. The mayor was so impressed, he appointed the 17-year-old to the Newark Board of Education, making him the youngest school board member in the United States. Larry received his bachelor's and PhD from Princeton University, and while there, organized rallies that ultimately led to Princeton's divestment from apartheid South Africa. Larry returned home to a Newark in turmoil. Decades of war, police brutality, discrimination, and poverty had left his city nearly in ruins. He responded by creating the People's Organization for Progress and by leading hundreds, sometimes thousands of followers in a relentless, nonviolent campaign designed to bring order to the chaos. And 45 years later, the fight goes on. At the rallies, you'll hear the cries, no justice, no peace, equal education for all, stop police brutality. The membership has increased as the cases of police violence against unarmed black citizens continue to make headlines. And their motto and core belief, power to the people, for bringing power to the people is the foundation of all the work of Dr. Ham and the POP. The people must come together, must work together, must unite for a common cause. And so, the people meet weekly at the Abyssinian Baptist Church. Dr. Ham, with an encyclopedic knowledge of history, teaches as he leads. As many people think that that's the first speech that Dr. King gave against the war, but it's not. He gave a speech in Alabama in December of 1966. The goal for this meeting of the People's Organization for Progress is the same goal the group has had since their first meeting. Educate and engage the public. Expose and bring an end to corruption. Organize and mobilize the people. And most of all, for all the people of Newark and beyond, a quality education, equal employment opportunities, access to health care, dignity, and hope. We must unite all these struggles with the struggle of labor. We're fighting on different fronts, but it's the same struggle. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Lawrence Ham.
power to the people. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Madam President, before I give some very brief closing remarks, I just want to introduce one lady that's here with me. For those who don't know, I'm the son of a teacher's aide. My mother. <laughs> My mother, Grace Ham, was a teacher's aide at South 17th Street School in Newark, New Jersey, where I went to school at. I am the proud product of public education in the United States of America. But my mother was a teacher's aide for many years at South 17th Street School, told me six months before she died when I was nearly 50 years old, that I was adopted. She left shortly thereafter. But God has a way of working things out. There's a lady here tonight on this stage, 80 years old, a lifelong resident of this city, Washington, D.C. She is my natural birth mother, Teresa Burton. She's here tonight. And I just want to, I want to thank the NEA and the NJEA for allowing me to share this honor and share this moment with my mother. We've spent a lifetime apart, but you are allowing us to have a wonderful moment together, and I thank you for it very much. <laughs> Madam President, officers, board members, fellow awardees, special guests, and the members of the National Education Association, Words would be inadequate to express the honor and the gratitude that I feel here tonight. And I want to especially thank the leadership and members of the NJEA who nominated me and who helped make this award possible tonight. And I also want to thank the leadership of this organization with millions of members who work in educational institutions all across this land. I want you to know tonight that this is the greatest honor I have ever received in my life, and I thank you very much. And I accept this award on behalf of the organization of which I am a part, the People's Organization for Progress, which since its founding 33 years ago works for racial, social, economic justice and peace. And so I accept this award not only on my behalf, but also on behalf of all of the members of the People's Organization for Progress. I accept this Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Award. And I can't help but feel a great sense of responsibility receiving an award named after Martin Luther King, who gave so much for the struggle for racial justice, even unto his life. And if Dr. King were alive today, I'm sure that he would be proud of the NEA and its embrace of its past and its attempt to meet the challenges of racial injustice. I'm sure that Dr. King 
would be proud of the fact that the NEA is embracing a social justice agenda that encompasses all people. I'm sure Dr. King would be proud, but if Dr. King were alive today, I believe he would say that racial injustice, inequality, and disparities are as great today in the 21st century in this country as they were in 1968 when he was assassinated. And if Dr. King were alive today, I believe he would be in, on the front lines of those defending public education against the forces that want to destroy public education in the United States of America. If Dr. King were alive, he'd be on picket lines with teachers in Chicago and in Cleveland and in other cities across this nation. Dr. King were alive, he'd be at Board of Education meetings, standing with you calling for full funding of our public schools. But if Dr. King was alive today, he would be hammering against the institutional racism that continues to plague the field of education in the United States of America. And if Martin Luther King were alive today, he would not be proud of the fact that our nation spends more on the military than it does on education. And a nation that does so digs its own grave. So brothers and sisters, I thank you for this award and I end by saying, Dr. King is gone, but his work goes on. We must build the movement that Dr. King was trying to build to transform this country into a nation where every human being can realize their full potential. Power to the people.